Hello. So I couldn't I couldn't just let rovers uh, die because um, there's so much potential for driving from biome to biome and doing science. So I built this rover. The key difference here is that it uses these wheels, and frankly, these wheels suck. Um, they've been nerfed to the point where they're useless. Uh, these wheels are great still. Uh, in fact, they're a little bit too good at turning on Kerbin, but I think they'll do okay on Mars, or Duna rather. Uh, so this rover is intended to be dropped from its nose, so this is the connection that you'd use, and here would be a spaceship, and you'd actually be tilted 90 degrees to the left. Uh, and the way you do that is, uh, before you drop it, you extend these landing legs, and then when you drop it, it'll tip forward and onto its rear wheels, and it'll all work out. Um, and that all works fine, but uh, the key to this rover is that it is a science rover, and it contains lots and lots of science. So it's not quite as fast as my sportiest rovers, not because I can't build a rover that fast, but because it's got all of this added stuff required for science purposes, such as six extendable solar panels and a nose cone and a couple of other details like that that uh, make it... Oop, let's drop the... Uh, there. Uh, anyhow, those details make it heavier and more fragile. So if I was going to be building a rover for speed, I would probably build much the same kind of rover, uh, except that I would replace all of that weight with roll cage. Um, However, all that aside, this still isn't as good as my best rovers for one other reason, and that is the low undercarriage. It's actually almost impossible to build a decent undercarriage with stock parts, because the pieces that you use to build the undercarriage will impact with the ground when the wheels uh, take a significant shock hit. The legs that I made for my mod don't impact on the ground, so those can still be used, and you can still build good rovers, build good ro rovers with those. But you can't build great rovers with stock parts just because you're going to bottom out and explode, which is a damn shame. But as you can see, we're running at four times physics, and it's not too bad. Uh, there is a bug in the SAS algorithm, um, but I think that you can more or less ignore it as long as you mount your SAS pointing along the axis of the vehicle instead of instead of up. Um, I haven't had very many problems with it since I changed to that orientation. Even though I did download some mods specifically to help me, I'm not using them at the moment. This is a stock stock rover and it works great. Works fine. You can even broadcast on the move if you'd like, but if you do that, then uh, you're going to eat through your electricity uh, and whoop, and it's going to be a little bit difficult to uh, do very much science because you won't regenerate electricity very fast. Uh, however, you do generate enough electricity to keep running if you're not broadcasting. As you can see, now that we're done broadcasting, our electrical power is going back up. It's also got enough monoprop to help it get around. Um, I'm not sure it's enough for Duna, but Duna is notoriously um, gentle. It's actually a really boring place to drive, so I don't even need RCS on Duna, and it's more than enough for anywhere else, uh, except for EVE, of course. You don't even want to try a rover on EVE, just just take a jet. Uh, so you might have noticed I just had a little wiggy thing. The uh, These wheels are really aggressive at the turns now. Uh, they've fixed the way that... It used to be that um, friction would decrease as you change your warp, uh, but in this particular, in this new version, at least with these wheels, that doesn't happen. So you're left with very, very high friction at very, very high warp speeds, which means that when you turn at a high warp, you'll flip as if you had, as if you had turned illegally using the RCS, um, or SAS rather. Uh, and that was actually one of the big problems that I, that you fixed by going into docking mode in the last version, because the, your wheels would have low enough traction that at any physics warp you could turn, and it would just turn more and more gently. But in this version, you have to take it down to warp speed 2, or you'll probably end up flipping if you're not careful. You may end up flipping anyway. Um, but that may not be a problem on low-gravity environments, because it may be that the lower friction of those environments uh, uh, allows you to, to make those kinds of turns. Um, we'll find out, I suppose. Anyhow, I just wanted to show you that you can, in fact, build fully functional rovers out of stock parts. Uh, you just have to use the most expensive wheel. Uh, so here we are, we're into an area where we can do some science, so let's go ahead and do just that. We'll break, like so, and deploy all of our solar panels. 
and uh, and let's do some science. Do 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 and that's how you drive to a new biome and do some science. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of building your own goddamn rover. Um, I can make this rover available, but it's pretty basic, so feel free to just build it yourself or a comparable rover. Um, the only complicated thing about this rover is the tipped body design, um, which you don't have to emulate. Uh, you can go ahead and do it any way you'd like. Uh, the only real reason I wanted a tipped body design is because I have these uh, rear-facing devices that I don't want to risk getting hit, uh, and I also need to do a little bit of tip for the sake of having I have these extended narrow wheels in front, so I needed to have uh, the the tipped chassis to keep it from spinning out of control a little bit. Well, either how. Anyhow, uh, that's just a, a, a small choice. You don't have to worry about that. Just build yourself some rovers using these big-ass wheels. They work much, much better than they used to. And right now, I think they're the only wheel worth using. That's it.